but my John Deere 420 has recently decided that under no circumstances will it start. <clears throat> Actually, this started happening last weekend, mid project. I was able to tap the starter and get it going for one day. Second day, it quit on me in the middle of the yard. Uh, the only way to get it started was to use a jumper wire directly to the starter motor, and uh, that's not acceptable. So today we're going to take this thing apart, put a new starter on it, maybe adjust the valves. Now, sadly, the only way to get at the starter in this thing is to pull the engine. So that's not that big of a deal, but I've got the loader in the way, and I've got to get all the tin off of there. So I'm going to just start taking it apart. And uh, once we get to a point where it makes sense, I'll start filming again. All right, so here we are just a couple of minutes later. Tins obviously come off very easily. Took off the, the air cleaner assembly. And basically what's next is going to be undoing the fuel line, the, the choke cable linkage, some of this electrical wiring. Some of the running of this looks a little sketchy anyway, so good opportunity to check on that. Um, hopefully then I get under there, I disconnect the drive shaft and we'll be able to lift this thing out. So one step at a time. So I've got most of the stuff disconnected up on the top and now I'm going to crawl underneath and do the, uh, the bolts that mount the engine in and the drive shaft bolts and put a pair of safety glasses on because anytime I don't, when I crawl under there, something falls into my eyes. So just think safe guys. Go here. I'm gonna go on the record and say that was a little bit more of a pain in the neck than I expected it to be. The loader on the tractor makes it a little bit more difficult to do everything. I ended up taking off the drive shaft bolts by going in through here. A little bit squirrely, but much easier than doing it underneath. The two back engine mount bolts are a piece of cake. The front ones are really difficult to get at, especially working by yourself, but I did that. Cables are disconnected, throttle cable, choke cable. I got the fuel line disconnected from the carburetor. I still have to disconnect the fuel line over on the other side from the fuel pump. And then to get my engine jack, engine hoist in here and see if we can just uh, pop this sucker out. Also one did the, the drive belts on the front. So really close, just a little bit of a pain in the neck. Uh, you know, it would be pretty straightforward, and I think it'd be a lot easier if I didn't have the loader frame on, but I have no desire to try to take that off today. All right, <clears throat> so a little more progress. We've got my engine hoist set up. Just ran a piece of chain between the two uh, lift points, and bolted that on, and uh, ready to pull this thing up. So the plan is lift it up, I'm gonna move the crane or the hoist back, drop the engine on this little portable table that I have and uh, then we'll be able to work on it. So I'm going to get my son out here to just help me guide it as I lift it out. And what are you going to do? You're going to lift it, yeah, push it that way. Lift it up. wire would be something we need to disconnect. Yeah. <laughs> and that's something that we couldn't get at before. Uh, but we were able to 
project done. jammed all of those in on top of each other. causing all the problems. Why we're taking the engine out in the first place. Just, just keep it from flopping around so that we can get it out here and put it on this table. Alright, here we are. Engine out. Engine tilted over. Now we can get out the starter, which is the root of all these issues. This is loose. I knew this was loose before I took it apart. Of course, I had absolutely no way to get at it and tighten it. It's possible, and there's a bolt missing on the bottom. It's possible that this is salvageable, but I'm guessing it's original. I don't want to screw with it. I got a new one for 65 bucks, so out with this and in with the old. <laughs> out with this and in with the new. So things are always more complicated. So I took the bolts out holding the starter, but the front shroud has to come off as well, or it looks like to do it right. <clears throat> so I just took the front shroud off. I had to take the side one off because a piece of it actually goes up into here underneath the coil. Just a little bit of a pain in the neck. I, uh, I envy the guys who can just, just do this blindfolded. Always takes a little bit longer. So far, nothing crazy. Let's get the starter out of there. So here's an interesting lesson. Before I took the shroud off, I removed, or I completely backed out those two bolts that were holding the starter in, couldn't get it out. So I flipped the engine over, took the shroud out. I just flipped it back out to get access to the starter. And at that point with the bolts loose, it fell off and bounced off of my foot. And I'm not wearing steel toe shoes today, but no harm done. Here we are on the bench, you know, no surprise that this thing wasn't working. One of the bolts is gone, which I don't understand because there's no room for it to come out. In fact, I was under the tractor last weekend trying to get a bolt in there and I couldn't. I was also trying to tighten this one up and there's no access to that either. So this thing has seen better days. I may fool around with it, but I think what I'm gonna do is just put the new one in. All right, here we are. Shroud back on, bolts double checked, everything is tight. New starter in, notice how I've got it sitting up on blocks so that I'm not crushing my solenoid while I'm working on this. Double check the starter bolts for uh, correct torque. Made sure that the bolts holding in the solenoid are very tight and they are. Uh, for the most part, I think I'm ready to drop this thing back in place, at which point I'm going to connect the wiring, make sure it turns over, and then uh, without running it, I'm going to try to do the valve adjustment while I have everything apart. So, engine back in the tractor, mounting bolts are in. I've got son number one and son number two, who gave me some assistance trying to wrangle those bolts. Drive shaft hooked up, electrical hooked up, fuel lines hooked up. I still got to do the choke cable and the throttle cable, but all I want to see is when I turn the key, does this thing turn over or does it just click? Cross your fingers, gentlemen. Let's see what happens. Hmm. 
that was a failure. Let's double check everything. All right, so after trying to start it and failing, noticed that the red wire there, which comes off of the starter improvement kit and actually goes to that hot side of the, of the uh, solenoid, had broken off or came out of the crimped connector down there. Of course, the one wire that's impossible to get at is the one that has to come off. So luckily the connector was open. I jammed it in there and I soldered it. I'm not sure that's gonna last forever, but it's in there. I hooked up the rest of the wiring and I hooked up the cables and I'm gonna turn the key and this time, boom, got some, uh, some turning over. So I uh, don't expect it to start right away because there's no fuel in it. I'm gonna crank it a little bit and see what happens here. All right, so here we are all buttoned up about six hours after I started. taken a little bit longer if it wasn't for my sons helping me put the uh, bolts back in. Having the extra set of hands there was a big deal. So we're done for the day here, a uh, good seven hours later. Um, I did not adjust the valves. That took too long. <laughs> I'll tell you, I didn't feel like it. So we'll save that one for another day. One thing that uh, I didn't show in the video was when I finally cranked the tractor and started it, um, it started to hunt. And I was a little bit concerned about that because, you know, I did have the front tins off of the engine and that's where the governor linkage is. And I was like, oh boy, I hope I didn't mess that up because I don't want to pull that thing back out of there again. So I checked all of the linkages and I checked all of the, you know, the locations of the spring and the, thro and the throttle cable and everything I had taken off to make sure I put it back together the right way. And I did. And it was still hunting. So if you've seen my other video about the carburetor swap on the same tractor, I, you know, I start thinking to myself, geez, could it possibly be the carburetor? But it, you know, how could that be? It, the carburetor's clean. It's been running great ever since I did that. It ran great this morning when I brought it up to the shop to actually fix it. And then I realized, well, I did you know, have that engine on my work table and I tilted it over and back and over and back, right, with the carburetor on the top several times. And the first time I did that, all the fuel in the float bowl came shooting out the top, as you would expect. And so I said, all right, well, you know, maybe if there's any sediment in the bottom of that float bowl, you know, now it's moving all around. And it's very possible that, uh, you know, with the tipping back and forth, something got down in that slow jet, on the idle jet, and now it's clogged. So popped the top off the carburetor, pulled that jet out, held it up to the light, Sure as heck, solid clog. Now, not hard clog, I just blew through it and it was perfectly clean. Put it back in and everything is good. So, you know, these little problems happen. You know, don't rule out the obvious solution because uh, nine times out of 10, that's what it's gonna be. Have a good one.